I've arrived early for the Idler Festival at Fenton House in London and so have a few moments to wander around these beautiful gardens and to tell you about an interesting conversation I had yesterday at Rupert Sheldrake's 80th birthday party I was able to catch Bernard Carr. Now Bernard Carr is a leading cosmologist um, one of the anecdotes that I've enjoyed him telling is that he worked with Stephen Hawking and was with Stephen Hawking at the premiere of the film about Stephen Hawking's life, which of course had a little bit of the physics, but sugared it with a lot of Stephen Hawking's personal life. And Bernard Carr liked to quip that although the film was called The Theory of Everything, the one thing it couldn't explain was actually what was driving the story in the film, which was, of course, people falling in and out of love. But I caught Bernard yesterday to ask him particularly about images in Dante's Divine Comedy and whether they are illuminating for him. He is a leading cosmologist and is particularly working on how multi-dimensions which show up quite spontaneously and all the time in M-theory particularly might hide facets of time that enable us to understand consciousness and particularly Bernard is interested in how we have a concept of the specious present so our experience of time tends to last about a second, something of that order. Um, anything much smaller than that passes us. Anything much longer than that we consider to be in the past or the future, not the present. And he has work from the understanding that different creatures, maybe different entities in the cosmos have different experiences of this specious present. So, for example, the specious presence of the Earth might be about a year, the time it takes to go around the sun. Um, the specious present of a bird or an insect that can buzz away from you before you can get near it might be much shorter. And he links this in his theory to the multiple dimensions of reality that modern physics shows up and uses that to understand how these dimensions might not be so tightly wrapped up as is often communicated in popular physics. Um, but some of the models allow these multiple dimensions to be extended and so the extension of these multiple dimensions might help to conceptualize and even turn into some mathematics an understanding of different facets of time that brings consciousness right in there and helps us to explain how we experience time too of course one of the great conundrums anyway so i was telling him about one of dante's images and how dante is amazed in the paradiso when he moves from the realm of space and time on the edge of the known cosmos, the prima mobile, and enters the Imperium, and how in that moment everything seems to go into a kind of reverse, or at least perhaps more accurately put is that it enters a kind of coincidence of opposites. Um, so for example, that which seemed to be furthest from the centre and so moving the fastest in the prima mobile, suddenly he sees that that which is closest to the centre, that of course now being the divine in the Imperium, is moving the fastest and so the angels, the seraphs associated most closely with God are spinning with great delight and light and love fastest to the centre. and. Dante is quite bemused by this because a bit like spinning a weight on the end of a string, the further away the weight is from the pivot upon which it's turning, i.e. the longer the string is, the faster the stone will turn at the extreme 
not the faster at the center and yet suddenly now he's seeing that in the infinitesimally gathered point of the center not only is everything moving the fastest but everything is there as Nicholas Accuser puts it the circumference has become the center and the center has become the circumference as, as well hence the coincidence of opposites and Bernard Carr listened very kindly to my discussion and made a wonderful observation. He said, well, if you imagine spinning a weight on the end of a string and the string lengthening until it got to such a point that the string was the dimensions of the cosmos itself, then by modern cosmology, that would produce a collapse or at least an inability to tell whether you were at the circumference of the cosmos or at the center of the cosmos because in a Euroborous kind of way at the greatest extent you can't tell the difference between that and the tiniest infinitesimally single point of the cosmos as well you would be at the Big Bang, even as you were at the extent of the cosmos. And I rather like that thought. Um, but then he went on to talk about how his understanding of dimensionality differs from this kind of approach, in fact. Um, the approach that he differs from is sometimes known as a relational approach to understanding the relationships between space and time. It's one particularly championed by Carlo Rovelli, and Carlo Rovelli writes about how Dante inspired him, in fact. So this is the understanding that um, the, what holds and what forms the, th the way that we experience space and time is actually the relationship between things. And so if the nature of the relationship between things changes, then our experience of space and time changes. And Carlo Rovelli finds in Dante a, an account of that full of Dante's images and the reason why, therefore, Dante experiences space and time differently when he enters the Imperium is because the relationships between all things have changed fundamentally. And now, instead of things being held in a dimensional space, and so having the experience of spatial separation either across space or across time, now, in the divine presence unalloyed, everything is experienced as held together by love and by intelligence, by knowing. And so that produces a very different experience of what it is to be related, and so therefore a very different experience of the relationships between space and time. And so Dante finds in the Imperium that he can actually traverse the extent of this divine presence, we would say, in his mind, simply by loving something and directing his attention towards that. He is not only alongside that which he's loving, but is also one with that with which he is loving. No more so than when it comes to knowing and loving God. And Carlo Rovelli likes this relational account because it relates to his relational understanding of cosmology too, inspires him to to think into, to feel into, to work out what that might be like in mathematical terms. But Bernard refers, prefers a dimensional account of reality, this idea that different dimensions of reality are wrapped up in what we call space-time, maybe 11 dimensions, as M-theory says. And But rather than this tight wrapping, there is this capacity for dimensions to be extended and so affect us on the scales that we normally experience things like time, this so-called specious presence. And for him, therefore, another image of Dante might be more useful. And it has to do with the way that Dante understands that people in the Paradiso experience telepathy because what he learns there is that telepathy 
i.e. the exchange of information, feelings, awareness between minds, comes about insofar as people are able to reach into the divine mind, or rather to be open to the divine mind reaching into them, I should say. And so there's something in this, I think, of different dimensions of reality that seem tightly folded and therefore excluded from us, unwrapping and becoming available to our consciousness. Dante visualizes this indeed when he enters the Imperium where that which seemed like a straight flowing river suddenly is seen to him to turn into a wonderful circle and then the wonderful circle itself shapeshifts again and becomes what looks a bit like a tremendous amphitheatre and then this tremendous amphitheatre unfolds again and becomes the white rose one of the famous images from the Paradiso. It's as if different dimensions of space and time are unwrapping, unfolding before him as he enters into the Imperium. And the net effect of this is that his mind is open more and more to reality because as it unfolds, so it is experiences embracing more and more of the divine reality. And so I wondered whether Bernard might find this useful. We're going to try and get together and have a full conversation about such things and to see, of course, whether Dante could inspire thoughts and that are useful for the physicist when it comes to developing cosmological models. But even that can be useful to us as we try to imagine and get a feel for what the science might be saying but of course also in that reaching out of our own minds into the nature of reality discover something more of that reality available to our own perception itself <laughs>